एक्काईस तारीख अगस्त सात सन्डे मामा माइजूला लेकर विंसर घूमना आज बोट में जाने प्लान में छूँ ये बाहर का सीन ये हाँस हिड़ी रहो माइजू वहाँ हो माइजू के छेव में भाजी भी हि अभी साथ ही मैं यहाँ छु मस एक्ट बस इस अब चालीस In the highly unlikely event of an emergency, additional exits may be used at the direction of the skipper and crew. These consist of the large sliding windows in the lower saloon, the windows or open sides in the front cabin, and the open sides around the upper deck. Buoyant apparatus consisting of life rings and life rafts is stored around the outsides of the upper deck and above the front cabin. In the event of any emergency, please remain calm and await further instructions from the skipper and crew. If you are accompanying small children, please keep them with you at all times. And if you have bird food purchased either from our gift shop or on board, please throw it well clear of the vessel. Ensure also that this is the only thing which you throw overboard. All rubbish must be placed in the bins provided or taken ashore. Finally, as with all our public sailings, there is to be no smoking on any part of this boat. We thank you for your cooperation, and if you have any questions or if there is anything we can do to make your trip more enjoyable, Please do not hesitate to ask a member of staff. We have a well-stocked bar on board situated on the lower deck towards the rear of the boat. This will be open throughout this trip selling a range of wines, beers, spirits as well as soft drinks, tea, coffee, hot chocolates and light snacks. We also have special promotions from time to time, so please ask about these. For instance, two or more of you may wish to share a jug of Pims, the perfect traditional drink to enjoy on the river. There's no need to leave your seat as a member of staff will be making their way around the boat shortly, taking orders for drinks which can then be brought to you. We're now leaving the centre of Windsor to our left, while on the opposite bank to our right is Eaton, and college boat houses lying the waterfront. Rowing is a popular activity at Eaton, the boys choosing either that or cricket is their summer sport. Those who choose cricket are known as dry bobs, whilst the rowers are called wet bobs. We are now proceeding upstream on the River Thames, which takes us in a roughly westerly direction. This would lead eventually to Oxford and beyond, though to reach Oxford would take approximately two days by river from here. This is mainly due to the 23 locks between here and the middle of Oxford, each one taking up to half an hour to negotiate on a busy day. There is a speed limit on the Upper Thames of a little under five miles an hour, added to which the Thames takes a very meandering course. So all in all, it's not the place to be if you're in too much of a hurry. To our left is Jacob's Island, formerly called Corporation Island. It was renamed after a well-known local councillor and boat builder called Arthur Jacobs. It was here that some of the largest wooden boats, almost twice the length of this one, were built in the now dismantled and long forgotten boat houses and slipways of the Jacobs Yard. As we proceed past Brockers Meadows to our right, some more of the Eton College buildings become visible, as do the spires of Eton College Chapel, which is built in an almost identical style to St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. It's known as the perpendicular Gothic style of architecture. Eton College was founded in 1440 by King Henry VI, originally naming it the King's College of Our Lady of Eton beside Windsor. Incidentally, the college owns nearly all of the land on our right-hand side from here to well beyond our turning point. They in fact own portions of land in many parts of the country, this being largely due to an outdated practice whereby parents of Eton boys used to donate land to the college in order to offset fees. Through the trees to our left shortly, you will see a full-size replica of a Hawker Hurricane fighter plane. This is a memorial to its designer, Sir Sidney Cam, whose former home stands a few hundred yards beyond. This plane bears the markings of one flown in the Battle of Britain by squadron leader John Grandy, who was constable and governor of Windsor Castle from 1978 to 1988. Sir Sidney Cam was a pupil of Royal Free School in Windsor. 
During this time, he designed and built model aeroplanes, which he then sold to the boys of Eton College. Whilst the Hurricane was his best known aircraft, Cam also designed the Hunter in 1951, which in 1953 went on to break the world speed record of 727 miles per hour. Cam's final design was the Harrier, which remained in RAF service for 50 years oh, until 2010, and it is still flown by the US Marines as the AV-8B. <laughs> Ahead of us is the Windsor Railway Bridge, being one of several across the Thames designed by Isabel Brunel, a famous Victorian engineer. The bridge was completed in 1849 for Victoria, and it was a great western railway that went right up to the front of Windsor Castle. The design of this bridge was unique in its day, as were many of the other designs. This one, because the 180 stones of the space was so the size of the world, it simply rests there under its own allowing for expansion and contraction of the ironworks during temperature changes. This type of span is known as a bowstring arch, and the brick viaduct was constructed between 1861 and 1865, replacing an original wooden trestle structure. The arches were incorporated into the design to prevent flood water from being trapped on the upstream side in the event of the Thames bursting its banks. It's also believed to be Brunel's oldest surviving structure still in continuous use and was granted Grade II listed status in 1975. In 1883, Windsor Central Station became part of the London Underground Network when the district line was extended from Ealing Broadway to Windsor using the tracks of the Great Western Railway. However, this was short-lived as the service was withdrawn in 1885. The land to our left forms part of Baths Island, so called because in the days before Windsor had a purpose built swimming pool, the channel behind the island was closed to boats during the summer months, providing the people of Windsor with a safe swimming area. In 1870, Queen Victoria disapproved of the site of bathers from the Royal Train and had them moved to the downstream end of the island. Then in 1904, the area by the railway was used again, but this time with men on the downstream side. To our left is the Windsor Leisure Centre, being the current incarnation of Windsor's swimming facility. It replaces an earlier outdoor pool. The centre stands on the site of the once famous Ricky Tick Club of the 1960s. The Ricky Tick was a well-known live music venue in its day. It started out at the Star and Garter at Windsor Town Centre in 1962, before moving to a semi-derelict mansion on this site called Clua Meads in 1964. Many of today's major acts, such as The Who, The Rolling Stones, Stevie Wonder and Pink Floyd, 